talking to a friend and thank you, Manos, so for your kind invitation. It's a good honor to accept you today and to be here with my friends in others once more. So, my topic is the sub Cabrais uh, Tear uh, Repair. This is my disclosure of conflict of interest. And um, the prevalence of the sub Cabrais Tear is reported ranging between uh, Four and seven percent of these isolated lesions, but when we look at combined tears, so we can see that the percentage, the number, the prevalence of the tears dramatically increases. And uh, Lafos stated that almost uh, fifty percent of the of all the calf tears are combined with the superior and uh, uh, subcapillary tears. So uh, the most frequent uh, tear, the, the pattern that we can observe, uh, is a is a particular side partial tear on the upper subscapularis, and uh, <coughs> it is frequently combined with uh, the tear of the reflection pulley, uh, with the lesion of the tear or instability of the long end of the biceps tendon, and with the tear of the anterior part, at least the anterior part of the subspinatus tendon. <coughs> Uh, several classifications have been reported in the literature uh, to identify the pattern of the tail, the tail of the subscapularis, as you can see here from the Friedman classification in 1999 to the most uh, recent uh, uh, classification reported by Edward Taverna in 2011. Uh, no one of these is universally accepted, so we do not have really uh, uh, universally accepted system to classify the subscapularis there. That's the reason why uh, we recently proposed a different uh, classification that combined uh, previously described pattern with something more. In the videos is not working. I don't know why it's working. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the first type is a minor train on the upper insertion side of the subscapularis. The second is an isolated articular side partial tear, and the third is the combined with the reflection full day tear. And then uh, we have a tear of foot thickness tear and the superior one third of the tendon. And then the type five is a foot thickness tear of the superior two thirds of the tendon. And then we have a complete tear with retraction uh, in a type six and uh, uh, the seventh. Uh, type is an irreparable tear with a, with a severe fat infiltration as described by the Tiger of us. So, <coughs> so, the main issue is uh, why it is uh, so challenging to repair the subscapularis tear, uh, much more than the standard uh, posterior superior tender calf tear. First, because of its location, because it's closer. Uh, to neurovascular structures closer than the superior uh, rotator cuff. So close to the axillary artery, axillary muscle cutaneous nerve, and the lateral of the percalis plexus, especially when the tear is, uh, is very large, retracted uh, uh, under the coracoid, the medium to the coracoid. Second point is the tendon mobilization, especially when the tear is, uh, is, uh, is a traumatic and there is a lot of scar tissue uh, all around the, the tendon in, uh, in the very coracoid um, area. And cautious caution uh, must be paid, uh, especially when uh, this condition uh, should be released uh, to uh, reduce the tendon. And the third point is that the working area is very limited, it's very narrow. And uh, we have a very limited field of view and a difficult instrument manipulation. So it's challenging, and the, the learning curve is uh, steeper than for a standard rotator cuff. So uh, take a look at the step by step repair procedure. First, uh, the presentation position for knee extrusion. And I used the, 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 um, the um, wheelchair position for all my rotator cuff procedures. But this is very important, especially for some scapularis repair. The patient should be uh, seated, not in, really in a big chair, but, uh, but completely seated so that the, uh, the, the acromion is completely parallel to the floor. If you, use a, um, if you have a, to address an isolated tear, then, uh, I use a two anterior portal, so anterior superior and a standard midglenoid portal. 
Uh, when I have a combined term with the most severe rotator cutter, I use a, a, lateral, a, rotator, a lateral approach and anterior severe approach. So I don't need uh, the mid level for, for combined term because the lateral cannula can be introduced into the joint through the rotator cuff there. The second point, very important, is uh, to identify the, the, the lesser tuberosity footprint. And uh, this maneuver that the uh, posterior lever push as described as a steel worker is very important and uh, this is very uh, uh, useful to identify the footprint of the, of the subscapularis, even if you use only a 30 degree scope. This is a 30 de degree scope view on the left side and this is on the, on the right side is a 70 degree scope. And as you can see, there is not much difference when you use this position and when you use this maneuver, internal rotation, slide abduction, and uh, um, push uh, posterior uh, humor head. Then first, you have to address the biceps pathology when it's combined with the, with the subscalaris there in case of inflammation or the genetic changes of the tendon, or in case of subluxation dislocation, so instability of the tendon. The treatment can be tenotomy or tenodesis as uh, perfectly described by Pascal days before. And uh, I used to perform a tenodesis on the upper part of the signal groups on the particular repair of the, 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 the suture anchors uh, with the Russell loop technique. Um, then we have, uh, especially for larger pairs, uh, for uh, uh, retracted pairs, uh, with the retraction in continuity <coughs> In the corpus humeral ligament and in the anterior part of the, of the rotator cuff, the so called coma sign. And this should be reduced uh, on the footprint of the lesser tuberosity. And this is a very important maneuver. And uh, uh, remind that if you want to repair a combined tear uh, uh, of the subscapularis and the posterior severe rotator cuff, the subscapularis should be reduced first and repair it first, otherwise you don't have too much traction on the process of your cuff. And in case you don't repair the subscapularis, you have more chance of failure of the rotator cuff failure. In case of traumatic tears, you have to release all the scar tissue just all around the tendon. And the complete release is necessary on the back and the front, on the superior part of the tendon edge and the tear edge uh, if uh, it's a retracted and ad adherent to uh, to sub, uh, in, into the subcortical space. Uh, then you prepare the footprint uh, uh, by abrasion, a standard with a standard arthroscopic bar, or by microfractures, as I used to do for um, uh, all my rotator including the subscapularis. And actually, I'm using a smaller arthroscopic model for nano fractures which is very small and then very deep um, into the bone uh, to achieve uh, uh, the um, marrow, bone marrow um, into the uh, deep cancerous bone of the ear. So then we have to uh, place our anchors. Um, you can use whatever you want, a single <coughs> row technique or double row if you prefer, according to, for example, the suture bridge or double or triple loaded or, uh, or not less depending on your confidence with the technique and with the, with the, with the device that you use. But what is important, the orientation of the joint. And the handle jaw uh, placement that described as the work is very important to obtain a correct placement to reproduce that that man angle theory uh, um, as uh, we used to do for a support of superior the So, so uh, this is the orientation of the hand uh, during anchor anchoring session for uh, for uh, for uh, subscribers, and uh, finally the sutures should be passed uh, through the subscapularis. And uh, what is important is to remind that uh, in the uh, uh, in the subscapularis, in the, in the central third, the fibers <coughs> are completely parallel. So it's much better to perform a, a much suture to reduce the risk of laceration of the, of, uh, of the tendon fibers. 
but in the uppermost part of the tendon, where is a confluence of the fibers of the um, subscapularis and the porcohumeral ligament, you have a net uh, work of, of fibers, so that arbitrary to pass an all inside suture, single, uh, simple suture, uh, through this net of fibers, because the hold the, 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 the whole strength uh, is much higher. But it's, what is important for me is, uh, is not to grab into the suture the fibers of the coracoeumeral ligament and the anterior part of the subscap or the supraspinatus, because we have uh, more chance of a re a reduction of the tendon after subscapularis movement. So I used to refer just uh, with an all inside um, uh, <coughs> uh, suture, an all inside repair of the severe part, so that as you can see here, uh, the the edge, uh, the, the lateral edge of the supraspinatus is still mobile to be reduced the over the greater tuberosity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so post-operative treatment for me, I use uh, uh, four weeks of uh, complete immobilization with, a, with an abduction sling, and then I start with the range of motion exercise at the fifth week uh, after surgery and uh, active uh, range of motion exercise and strengthening exercise two months after surgery and, the full, and until the third month. What we know about uh, from the literature about the subscapularis cerebral. Uh, according to the recent systematic literature review, there is no difference, first of all, between arthroscopic and open repair. So uh, subscapularis there is not an, uh, a strict indication for open surgery. If you uh, can repair arthroscopic, they do it because there is no significant difference in terms of pain and functional improvement between open and arthroscopic uh, procedures. <coughs> Regarding the um, surgical technique, um, this uh, paper by the published in 2015 showed that no difference in, uh, in terms of retro motion pain and functional improvement between double row and uh, speed bridge, a uh, social bridge uh, technique and the single row. But uh, uh, with the double row, we show the higher abduction strength and lower failure rate, according to what uh, already shown <coughs> for, for the standard process view rather than after that. So in conclusion, uh, uh, the, the, the crucial steps for the subscapularis repair are first, adjust the biceps pathology, time not in your tenodist according to your preference. Footprint visualization is very important. Home sign recognition to obtain a anatomical reduction and repair of your, of your tendon, and then release uh, whatever is necessary to be released to obtain a complete reduction of the tendon over the footprint on the lateral side of the lesser tuberosity. And then uh, the suture passage is, is another crucial point to reduce tension, to reduce the risk of the laceration or tendon fibers and respecting force vector direction during non-time. Thank you very much.